I'm Barbara Simmons, one of the practical nursing instructors here at Autry, and I am going to uh, demonstrate the insertion of a nasogastric tube or an NG tube and then the irrigation of the tube and then the removal. Find more information about how to insert the nasogastric tube is your fundamentals book, also your ATI website. Um, then we have other little videos also online if you want to look at those. This is a nasogastric tube right here. It decompresses the stomach um, and keep, uh, helps the intestines rest. So it has little openings down at the end of it. Um, it has little ha black hash marks on it that shows you how well, you know where it's at in the nose or in the stomach just for a guide for measurement. Um, and then there also has this blue little tube and this is an air vent and I'm very picky about this. It will haunt you in your dreams for the rest of your days if you ever irrigate water down this blue tube. This is an air vent not an irrigation tube. Sometimes they put these little blue tabs on them to keep people from irrigating. Doesn't stop some, they still irrigate. If you do put water down this, you will break the seal and you will have gastric juices run all over your patient's bed and all of him and I will be very, very angry. So never ever irrigate water down the blue tube. This is a can feed and I will talk. This is for feeding. Um, for people to uh, put down formula for patients that can't eat by chewing or they have swallowing problems. This is a Kia feed. So the, if instead of putting it in a PEG tube in their tummy, they would do a Kia feed first. So I will talk more about this a little later. Okay, the purpose of the nasogastric tube is like I mentioned before, is to decompress the stomach. Some reason that uh, they make their valves are not working, the small intestine is not working, maybe they had surgery on their valves, it makes the valves sort of come stasis where they're not moving well. They, that, they will put down the nasogastric tube until the valves are working, until the patient's having valve sounds and everything is moving again. Or they may be a small valve obstruction uh, where for some reason there's a blockage and the Easiest way to say it is the sewer is backing up, so they will have to keep, they will suction off everything until the valve obstruction is removed. Um, another reason is, like I mentioned, surgery, blockage, poisonings, if they want to suction things off the stomach for poisoning. Okay, before we get ready to insert, of course, we get, get our supplies before, after, whatever you need to check the order. Make sure you have an order, of course, we always do that. And then when you go into the patient's room, or when you go into the patient's room, you make sure, of course, you have your patient identifiers, your three identifiers, asking their name, date of birth, checking their armband, checking to make sure you have the right patient, and making sure you have the birth date, the right birth date, the right ID number. Make, of course, that all goes along with it. Going in and, um, um, like going in with checking the order, finding out the symptoms. Does he really need one, of course? That's always an important thing. Checking his uh, bowels. Is he getting nauseated? Is he nauseated? That would be one of the things um, to make sure that they do have what need of one. His stomach may be getting distended. Also, has he has a history of a skull fracture or nasal surgery? That would be somebody you wouldn't want to put an NG down unless you have some little x rays in there with it at the same time because. There has been times when somebody had a, a skull fracture from an auto accident and the tube went up into the brain. I have a little, in my box, I have a, an article about that. The tube went up instead of down. Not a very good thing. So is there any trauma? So you want to make sure if there is, you know, uh, do we want to get an x-ray first? You know, hint, hint to the doctor, those kind of things to make sure it's going to be safe for the patient. Ask him if he has past trauma with his nose because if he has a broken nose, the tube may not go down well, so it may not go down at all. So that's another thing because we're going to ask him which one does he breathe better out of, and that's the one we're going to clog up with the tube. So, um, so those are those kind of things. Does he have an allergy? 
checking his armband. Does he have an allergy to tape, adhesive? Because we don't want to put adhesive tape on his nose and he have an allergy to it. Um, so it's cause more problems. And of course we will explain the procedure. That's the other thing that we will go into. And then the supplies you'll need, um, they're all on your list. You can look at your paper, but you'll need a, maybe a flashlight. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't need a flashlight. Um, a paper clip and a rubber, a paper clip, a safety pin and a rubber band, um, an irrigation setup, and normal saline, which we'll show about that with irrigation. Um, and emesis basin, some people get sick to their tummy, so you need emesis basin, a cup of water or ice with a straw, and then um, uh, NG holder for the nose, which we'll talk more about. You can either, if you don't have one of these NG holder pieces of tape, you can use regular old Joe tape. And cleaning, um, making the nose a little sticky so the tape will hold. Um, there's things you can do with that. And then oral care, leaving, talk, we'll talk more about oral care. Um, if you need to look in the back of the throat, to make sure the tooth's going down the back of the throat, and you may need a tongue blade along with your flashlight. And of course, the NG tube. Oh, oh. and uh, gel to make it go down a little nicer and, and, and slippery, slipperier. Also, the, your towel and maybe some Kleenexes. And the reason for the Kleenexes, you think, why do we need Kleenexes? Because when we go down the tube, down, and we go down the, t the, the and it turns to go down the throat, it hits those tear ducts, and sometimes tears run down their face. So that's the main reason for that, for some, and plus just, it's uncomfortable. So sometimes you need Kleenexes. I'm going to explain the procedure, tell him that he's going to have an, in, a tooth put down his nose and it will go into his tummy to decompress his stomach and will help his nausea, his distension, uh, of whatever his problem is. And that's telling him the reason why we're going to put the tube down. Tell him we're going to need his help because it would make it easier to put the tube down if he assists at the same time. Tell, uh, explain that when we put the tube down, he'll take small sips of water and swallow. That way we make sure we get the tube into his stomach, not into his lungs that he can swallow at the same time. So, and it, it tell him it is uncomfortable. It's not a, a pleasant thing, but it will also keep, give him comfort afterwards because he won't be sick to his stomach, won't be nauseated and hurting. So, when we get ready to do this, we have our water right here. We have our towel that I forgot to mention before. But we have our towel, and we want him in an up position all the way up, not lying down, all the way up into a sitting position. Um, and then um, move the pillow a little bit because we're going to have to put, uh, have him hyperextend his neck backwards, and then we're going to tell him to put his neck forward as we're going down with the tube. I'm going to get ready to put in, remember, we got to do um, the nose to the ear and down, and I have my tape down here. So be sure to put your KY uh, lubricant on it, on your or surgery lube, whichever one you have, and you tell the patient to flex the head forward and have him get ready to drink his water or chew on his ice so he can swallow. So we're going to extend the head back, point toward the ear, and as you feel it, go over the hump in the back of the nose, and you might have his little eyes water. So, and then put the head forward and tell him to swallow, 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 until you get down to where your tape is, so you know you're where you're supposed to be. And you may go ahead and hook up to suction and turn on your suction, because especially if he has a bowel obstruction, it's going to run out right away. And we're going to, since he's not a yanker or a puller, we have time so we can then put on his stabilizer onto his nose. Get the right direction and then stabilize it. And then we will check for placement and make sure we're in the right place. But like I said, if it's for a bowel obstruction or something like that, you know you're in the right place because stomach contents is coming out. 
But before, again, before any time you put anything in, you make sure you are, you do check for placement, either with pH strips or doing a bolus of air and listening to his tummy. Good to go. Then, then after that, you hook it to your suction. Turn on your suction machine. You want it on intermittent. And the reason you want it on intermittent versus continuous, continuous suction will just stick to the wall of the stomach and you may develop a ulcer. Intermittent will be a little slow, but it will suction, stop, suction, stop. And, um, and you want it, to, what it mentions there in their handout, about 80 to 120 millimeter, many millimeters of mercury. Okay, we have the tube down, we have it hooked up to suction, and he's feeling a lot better, he's not near as nauseated. But before you leave the room, you need to make sure you have an irrigation set up with normal saline. And the other thing you need to make sure is make sure you have the call light within reach. And I'll take my gloves off here. And um, hook a rubber band with a paper safety pin, key, what they call it, paper clip. Hook that with here with his tube. Get it right here. So it's not, and hook that to his gown. And that keeps it, or helps it, not pull so much on his nose. So you want to um, hook the, the rubber band safety pin to his gown so it doesn't pull so much on his nose. The other thing, depending on doctor's orders, some doctors allow ice chips, some allow just moisten their mouth with uh, a washcloth. You just have to depend on your doctor's orders um, on that. So some allow some ice chips, some don't allow any. So everybody's a little bit different on that. Um, and also telling him to move around in bed because that will help keep the tube off the, sticking to the wall of the stomach. And then with his head of the bed, you can let it down, but you don't want it all the way flat. So um, just leave it a little bit elevated, but it can be let down. It doesn't have to be all the way up. Okay, now we're going to talk about irrigation. Um, Every day when you come in, we're also going to talk about what you need to do for your shift assessment. And when you're assessing him and assessing your patient that has an NG tube, you want to make sure you check um, about the uh, stomach contents coming out, the color consistency, etc. Also, you want to assess the bowel sounds. And you assess the bowels, make sure you turn off the suctioning. Because if you don't turn off the suctioning, you're going to hear bowel sounds, so to speak. So you want to make sure if there they really does have alcos or really doesn't, you need to make sure you turn off the um, the suction machine and then listen. Um, and does is he distended? Is his nausea relieved? Um, is he passing gas? Those kind of things. Also mouth care, comfort care. Make sure if you do some mouth swabs that will help with the dryness in the mouth. So you can do um, if they like the lemon glycerin or they like the little. Uh, denture care type swabs um, or wetting their mouth with a wet washcloth. Don't let them suck the washcloth in water. Um, so I've had patients do that. They suck the little washcloths dry because if they get too much water, you're going to mess up their electrolytes. So be careful with that. Um, so, um, and if they're alert and awake and oriented type person, they can have maybe maybe a cough drop or a lozenge or something like that and get that ordered for them because their throats get sore. But one of the other things that will be ordered is irrigating. So if you need to irrigate, uh, the doctor will order maybe every four hours as needed or just as needed. So you would use normal saline and you pour some normal saline in there. And so he's complaining about being nauseated. It's not sucks, sucks suctioning well and for whatever reason it's clogged up or something um, with the stomach contents um, so whatever kind of stomach contents and it's clogged up the end have make sure they're moving around in bed that helps get it off the lining of the stomach if it gets into one of those folds that will help relieve uh, his nausea it makes uh, or whatever is stuck on the end so it will irrigate better. The other thing you can do is um, 
turn off your machine and you're going to irrigate and you need about uh, 20 30 mils of water for irrigation of your saline you have the machine turned off squirt in and then you can either aspirate it back or hook it back up to the suction machine and let it do its work and it will suction and the main reason for that is so that um, uh, it will unclog the end main thing is you I and O because how much water you put in you mean need to make sure you get back so you need to make sure you have a list of how much you irrigate with and how much the, you get back so you can make sure that he's not putting the water somewhere else so you make sure you, everything balances out okay now the doctors come in that's when you did your morning assessment you heard bowel sounds you turn off the machine and you listened and you go oh yeah he had bowel sounds he's passing gas he is ready and good to go he's feeling good and everything so you're waiting for the doctor to come in and he agrees with you he has bowel sounds make sure the machine was off before we listen so we know for sure that's actually happened because if he doesn't have bowel sounds and his stomach is not working and you remove the NG tube too early, his stomach may swell up again, he may get nauseated again, and you don't want to have to put it down. And he definitely does not want you to have to put it down. So you want to make sure he has bowel sounds and everything. So he's been up walking, he has everything working really good, um, and he's almost ready to go home. So, um, so the doctor writes an order and he says to remove the NG tube. So you, you checked it, you done all your, your checks and everything uh, to make sure uh, that he is the right person and uh, the right patient and you do have the order. So we're gonna remove the NG tube. Make sure your machine is turned off. Uh, we don't need to do that. So we're going, we have our irrigation set up. We're gonna do about Pull up about 10 milliliters of water and to clean out the tube and with flinch water and now oops and now we're going to do some air we have our air and we squirt it in our air get our blue pad or a towel and we're going to take the tape off i should have done that before i put on my gloves but let's see if we can get it off here we go and we're going to tell him to take a deep breath and because you want to remove all in one motion do not stop he will not want you to stop and we have a towel we have Kleenexes because this hurts so you just one deep breath take it out wrap it around our towel and pull it around and that is removing the NG tube the other thing now that we have everything removed and he is ready to go is now um, tell him we need to watch it, make sure he does his stomach doesn't get distended, he doesn't get nauseated, continues to pass gas. The type of diet he might be on first is a clear liquid diet that he tolerates that. They'll go up to a full liquid, tolerates that. Okay, everything's moving good. He'll go up to a regular diet. So they start off small, and that's what you need to assess and watch for throughout the day. Is, is he getting distended? Is he getting nauseated? Is his bowel still working? And can he tolerate his diet? So uh, be sure to watch all that. And that's what you need to assess and watch for. Um, and have him report to you if everything is okay. And he continue on his intake and output. He needs to get up and move around, walk, uh, because he's ready to go home once everything's working and he can tolerate his diet. The can feed is different. It's put down the same, measurement the same, making sure you got it to the stomach. Um, they're just more pliable. You have to really watch when you're putting it down um, because it can curl up in the back of the throat. Um, I've seen them, especially patients that are not helping, it will curl up and come back the nose on the other side or out the mouth. It just, it's a little, because it's twirling, and also folks are getting this, usually aren't very helpful in swallowing the way they should. So the main thing with this is it does have a metal stylet right here. Do not remove that metal stylet until x-ray tells you to. 
because you put it down the patient again, down the same, and it has to be x-rayed uh, to make sure it is in the stomach all the way. So you make sure it is, make sure, and that doesn't have to be a doctor's order. That is a standard at almost every hospital. You always get an x-ray before you put any liquids down the, the, the feeding tube. Because again, it's very pliable. It could go down one lung versus the other lung. So you want to make sure it is down. Sometimes it takes two or three tries. X-ray come up, x-ray it, then that call and say you need to go down a couple more inches or you got it in the lunge and you pull it out and put it back down and do it again. So it, some, I've seen it try two or three times before it finally got in the right spot. So you never ever uh, put any liquids down until x-ray say it, says it's there. And again, it does not have to be a doctor's order. It is standard in most every institution I know of. So do not pull this little stylet out until x-ray says you can and then you'll hook it up to your tube feeding and feed as the doctor ordered. But everything else is the same. Just making sure you have it in the right spot. Make sure it is x-rayed before you feed. And you always check for placement before you feed. You never feed until you check for placement. If you left the patient's room, you come back in, you check for placement again. So this is a temporary measure for feeding. Uh, for the patients that aren't eating well or swallowing problems until the family decides whether they um, Whatever is causing the swallowing problems is relieved or they decide to put in a peg tube uh, directly into the stomach. So um, so uh, That is what is called a Kia feed. Okay, that is it. That's for the insertion of the NG tube uh, irrigating of the nasogastric tube and um and removing the nasogastric tube and the difference between that, the Kia feed, and the nasogastric tube. So again, if you have any questions, just to ask. Uh, also check your books. You have a great resource. That resource is there for you if you need more information. Um, and if you need uh, us to demonstrate one-on-one, we'll be happy to help you do that um, if, if for anything that is not uh, understood. So be sure to ask if you have any questions.